A warm welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Thursday, February 3rd. Expectations that thousands here would be sickened by the Omicron outbreak has not materialized and health authorities are grateful. Chief Medical Officer, the Most Honorable Dr. Kenneth George, told reporters on the sidelines of a donation of equipment at the St. Philip District Hospital this morning that it's a positive development. Although there's been significant community spread, we certainly um, continue to analyze the data daily and we believe that um, we are in our fifth to sixth week of the, of the Omicron outbreak and the predictions of thousands of people have not come true. And I, that is comforting, but at the same time, I think the message remains the same. Um, we, we continue to do our internal um, modeling and um, which is slightly different from UE's modeling, but um, I don't think we will reach the numbers that have been put into the press. However, um, we can control this by simply having persons comply with what we ask. In this evening's COVID-19 update, an 89-year-old woman is the latest person to succumb to the viral illness. She was fully vaccinated and died on Wednesday at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility. The number of deaths from the virus has reached 283. Meanwhile, the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 609 new cases of COVID-19, 278 males and 331 females from the 2,303 tests conducted yesterday. The cases comprise 119 persons under the age of 18 and 490 who are 18 years and older. There were 187 people in isolation facilities while 11,043 were in home isolation. In other news this Thursday, the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association has a new chairman. Rene Copping was elected at a special general meeting held by the association last month. This follows the departure of former chairman Jeffrey Roach last December, who served 18 months of his two-year term. Copping, who is a hotel owner and operator of two South Coast hotels, says she is ready to get down to business. I'm really very excited to be leading the association at this time as we seek to rebuild our industry after two years of pandemic uncertainty. 2022 also marks the BHTA's 70th year of existence, and I'm standing on a legacy of strong board and executive leadership over those years, and a secretariat team that has been second to none. It is certainly my vision to build on this foundation to again have tourism be the preeminent sector driving the development of Barbados. There's a great deal of work to do, but we in this industry have proven our resilience. And with the support of all Barbadians, we are ready to re-establish our island as a leading tourism destination. The two horses which were stolen from the Codrington Riding Stables in Waterford St. Michael have been found. Owner Patrick Crony told Barbados today he is relieved that the animals valued at $10,000 are back home safely. So as, you know, you're very glad to see it again that these horses are back home and, you know, get them fully back in operation. You know, it's been pretty tough for me, you know, financially, trying to maintain them and to keep them there to go through this and all. And, you know, I'm just hoping that we can get some business coming in, you know, that we can continue back to the store for this Coronavirus has, you know, knocked us for six, you know, and, you know, financially under stress, you know. So I'm hoping I can, you know, start to see some business coming our way, you know, and be able to uplift, you know, everything here, you know, uplift everything, you know. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And 
keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional happenings in Guyana, former Education Minister Dr. Nicolette Henry announced her resignation from the National Assembly, paving the way for People's National Progress Reform leader Andrew Norton to become the opposition leader. Earlier this month, Norton was elected chairman of the opposition coalition APNU and the Alliance for Change, AFC. We get the details from News Source Guyana. Dr. Henry, who served as Education Minister under the APNU AFC government, announced this afternoon in the Assembly that her budget presentation today was her last. She offered thanks to a number of people as she prepared her departure from the National Assembly. In light that this is my final budget presentation in this Honorable House, of course, I begin by thanking none other and His Excellency, former President Granger, who reposed in me the confidence to serve in this honorable house. I am forever grateful to the people of this country who afforded me the opportunity to serve them with professionalism, dignity, and accountability. I thank the coalition partners, Kemraj, for their unwavering support and guidance. On the international front, NATO says Russia has stepped up developments to Ukraine's northern border, Belarus, in recent days and was expected to have 30,000 troops there for a joint military exercises this month. We get more on this report from Reuters TV. Over the last days, we have seen a significant movement of Russian military forces into Belarus. This is the biggest Russian deployment there since the Cold War. With an expected 30,000 combat troops, Spetsnaz Special Operation Forces, fighter jets, including Su-35, Iskander dual-capable missiles, and S-400 air defense systems. So we speak about a wide range of modern military capabilities. All this will be combined with Russia's uh, annual nuclear forces exercise expected to take place uh, this month. Yesterday, the US announced that they will deploy additional forces to Germany, Poland and Romania. This is a powerful signal of U.S. commitment and comes on top of other recent U.S. contributions to our shared security. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.